All right, so as promised, here are a few examples working with laws of exponents. I've left the laws up here um, in case we need to refer to them. Uh, we'll start simple, we'll work our way up. You might think that the one at the end with numbers should be the simplest, everything else has variables, but that's an example that messes people up all the time. Uh, people really struggle with that one. So let's have a look. First one, x cubed times x to the six. Well, that's a straightforward application of this first rule, right? Um, we're multiplying two powers with the same base, so we simply add the exponents. 3 plus 6 is 9. That's x to the 9. Um, now, I've thrown the other one in because people tend to get mixed up on these, right? When should I, when do I use that rule, right? The rule applies for multiplication. There is no corresponding rule for addition, right? Um, so there, there's nothing you can do really to combine those two terms. So you leave them as is, right? Uh, the only thing you could possibly do to simplify this is, is to kind of use this rule backwards. You could say, well, x to the 6, that's, that's x cubed times x cubed, which might come in handy because you might want to factor this, right? So you might want to say, oh, that's x cubed times, so x cubed is x cubed times 1, right? And then x to the 6 is x cubed times times x cubed, right? So you might be able to factor, but you can't combine, right? You can't, there's nothing you can do to get rid of that plus sign. It's going to be there, whatever form you write it in, that plus sign is going to stick around, okay? Let's look at these ones. All right, so this one here, we need two different rules. It's a combination of this rule here for raising a power to a power, as long as, as well as what to do when you have two different numbers in the base, all right? So let's apply this rule first, right? So we're going to uh, distribute the 4 to the two different bases. Um, so this is going to be x cubed to the fourth power times y squared to the fourth power. And now we multiply the exponents. So 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. And again, I don't know what x and y are, so there's nothing I can do to combine those. I have to leave it as is. Um, now, the next one, I've got a square root. How do you deal with that? Well, the key to dealing with this one and simplifying, if you can, is remembering that square roots can be written as fractional powers. Okay? So I could write this as x cubed y squared. Okay? to the power one-half. All right. Now I can distribute the power the same as before. x cubed to the one-half y squared to the one-half. Okay. There's actually something subtle here when you're simplifying. Okay. Here, We want, to, we want to apply the rule, right? We want to apply this rule. So we say, okay, x cubed to the one-half. Well, that's x to the three-halves. And that's fine. You're, you're more or less using this rule here when you do that, right? You're saying the square root of x cubed, I can write as x to the three-half, right? It doesn't matter whether I do the square root first or the cube first. I'm going to get that answer, okay? y squared to the one-half. Now here, there's something that you have to watch out for. The temptation is to just write y, right? Um, the square root of a square doesn't always give you back the thing that you started with, right? Because what if the thing you started with was a negative number, right? Let's say y is minus 3. What happens when you square minus 3? I square minus 3, I get plus 9. What's the square root of 9? It's 3, not minus 3. It's 3. So I don't actually get back the thing I started with. Turns out, what you get is the absolute value. So there's, there's a general rule here which says that the square root of a square is the absolute value, okay? Right. So you have to be a little bit careful with that, right? Um, I'm being slightly lazy when I write down this rule here. Really, I should be careful because M and N, if they're, let's say, 
fractional powers, there's not always going to be necessarily this agreement on this uh, on both sides. Really what I should say here probably is that either a has to be positive or m and n have to be integer exponents. Um, so you've got to be a little bit careful about some of these things. All right, how about this one? Well, there's two ways to think about it. One is to just sort of apply the rule here directly, right? x squared, so it's 2 minus, minus 3, x to the fifth, okay? It's fine. Um, the other thing you might do if you, if you wanted to is, is to say, well, that's the same thing, right? If the double negative is throwing you off, uh, it's remember that oops, what you've got here is x squared times. So if you've got a negative exponent, you can bring it upstairs, right? Um, so this rule here could be rewritten. And, you know, if I put minus minus here, I'd have the minus there, right? Um, so I could move that minus to the other side. 1 over x to the minus 3 is the same thing as x to the 3, okay? So a negative exponent on the bottom becomes a positive exponent on top. All right, uh, this one here, what do we do? Well, there's two choices, right? And, and again, this is one of these kind of, it's an order of operations question, and it's one where in this case, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same result either way. We can either first apply the outside power to everything, so cube all four terms, then see if we can simplify, or we might want to simplify inside first and then apply the power. Generally speaking, it's easier to simplify first, right? You want to simplify and then, and then apply powers. Right? Expanding and then trying to simplify is usually a little bit trickier. So x over root x, that's x to the 1. Remember that this is x to the 1 half. 1 minus a half gives me a half, right? x over root x is just root x. And same as up here, y squared over y to the minus 1. I bring that up, 2 plus 1 gives me y cubed. I still have to cube. So x to the 3 halves. 3 times 3 gives me y to the 9. OK, how about this last one? So this one is tricky. We've got the fractional power, negative exponent, numbers inside. How do we deal? Well, the first thing is we might notice that 8 and 27 are themselves cubes. We can write them as powers. Um, one thing we might want to do maybe before we do anything, let's get rid of that negative. Um, so the negative exponent means reciprocal, right? So I can get rid of the negative exponent by flipping my fraction. That gets rid of the minus sign, but still the two thirds. Be careful, you don't flip that fraction, you're flipping that fraction. Okay? Then I might realize that 27 is 3 cubed, 8 is 2 cubed, okay? And I can apply that power to both of them. 2 thirds, 2 thirds. Now we use this rule, right? 3 times 2 thirds, 3 times 2 over 3 just leaves me with 2. So 3 squared over, same logic, 2 squared. So my result is 9 over 4.